Hi, my name is Jackie Geffner, and I'd like to talk to you about my experiences with Hep C. Believe it or not, I'm 71 years old. I just turned 71. And in 1986, I was working in Denver, Colorado at a large hospital on their psych unit. And I used to donate my blood there a whole lot because I have AB positive blood, which people seem to be anxious to get. And I went in to donate and they called me back up on the unit and they told me I couldn't um, donate anymore and I was confused. And they told me that I had what at that time was called undifferentiated hepatitis. Oh, being a younger woman at that point, I was like, say, 36 years old. Um, I had no idea about hepatitis. I mean, I was a pot smoker. I'd been a pot smoker for many years. I didn't drink a lot of alcohol, though I had a little stint with that, but nothing really extreme. And I didn't understand anything about hepatitis. Um, and I also didn't have health insurance, which happened for a lot of us. I was a single mom and just doing everything I could to support myself and my son. So I kind of lived with hepatitis C for what was half of my life before I got treated. Um, I moved to Oregon in 1989 and I got involved with Caring Ambassadors, which was wonderful. And I tried to talk to people about being tested for hep C um, because at that time my hep C had been diagnosed. Um, and, but there was nothing I could do. I couldn't get treatment. Um, treatment had just started coming out, but I wasn't eligible. And I wasn't eligible because I wasn't at Medicare age. Well, I really was, but I wasn't, taking Medicare because I wasn't getting Social Security because I was waiting till I turned 70. So to make like a long story short, I went down and I got involved with, like I said, Caring Ambassadors, and I um, went down to the state legislature and I spoke in front of them and I identified myself and I said, I am not your typical hep C patient because there's been a lot of stereotyping and a lot of oh, falsehoods about hepatitis C and drug usage, and that's the only way you could get that. Well, of course, you can get it through bad blood, which was what happened with hemophiliacs. Um, you could get it as I did. I was assisting a client uh, that I was working with on the psych unit who had slit his wrists and uh, we were putting him into restraints and putting him into seclusion and that's probably where I got infected because I could have I had a cut on my hand because um, I had a lot of scratches from dealing with this client so there's a lot of histories behind how people get hep C but when I went to the legislature and I spoke to them they basically well, I can get a little pushy, but they wouldn't look me in the eye. They wouldn't tell me why I could get hep C, have had hep C but not be treated because I wasn't getting Social Security yet and I wasn't getting Medicare yet, um, which resulted in my getting cirrhosis of the liver. Um, at that point, I'd had hepatitis for more than half of my life. And literally, I did not look like I look now, and there are pictures of me that show that. Um, I certainly did not feel like that, and even though my son was older and starting to live on his own, my life was incredibly difficult because I couldn't work hardly. Luckily, working for myself, I could schedule appointments where I could work for an hour and then sleep for an hour, hour and a half, and then make myself presentable enough to be able to work some more. I was able to be treated for my hep C and I got um, the hep C drug that was being available at that time, which was Gilead's drug. Um, I was able to go back to being a functioning adult within about a week and with lots of energy to the point where people were like thinking I was possibly 
doing drugs <laughs> because there was so much energy in my body and I was able to complete tasks and I was able to do more than four things at a time. And it, I mean, in the course of a day, not in a time, but in the course of a day. And um, my life just got really super wonderful. But what I realized in doing that and in the work that I have done in my practice as a massage therapist, but also being an educator for many years around HIV prevention and HIV complementary health care, was that as we get older, nobody wants to look like they're getting older. And nobody wants to feel like that. And people have said to me hundreds, if not thousands of times, I feel just fine the way I am. And what I need to impart upon you is the fact that one day you're not going to feel so fine and you might not have that notice. And I can only ask you to please take care of yourselves by going, having your yearly test. COVID has put care, health care off for a lot of people. But health care is really important. Whether you believe in Western health care or not, the assessment of it is pivotal. And it's important for you to find out about hep C treatment because you can feel like I've been feeling. You can feel so much better, which as we're getting older, and I will say I am moving a tiny bit slower, but I don't want to lose my vitality. I look at elders compared to myself and I want to be as proactive against getting aged as I can. I need to support myself. I need to continue to work. I have a lot of passion for so many projects. And I believe you do too. You've probably been isolated like a lot of people have for the last year. And it's gonna take some adjustment. But the first thing you should do is sign up for a physical, get tested for hep C, get your hearing tested, get your eyes tested, get your breast checked for cancer, whatever you need to do so that you can go through this summer and enjoy yourself, which we haven't been able to do for the last year and a half. I'm incredibly grateful to Caring Ambassadors for allowing me to advocate for all of you the way that I have been, and I hope to do it in the future. But if we don't take care of ourselves, and this is gonna sound really harsh, but it's reality. Nobody else is going to if we don't do it for ourselves. And I'm here to tell you, you deserve it. So please go out and get tested for hep C. Your life depends on it. And I want to meet you one day. <laughs>